Hi again, welcome to another quick tutorial, um, this one in Cinema 4D. Uh, I just wanted to show you how to uh, use the inheritance effector to basically, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to create the ability for us to uh, animate from one set of, from one particle swarm or set of particles into another. And these can be random or they can take on the shape of another object. Um, so that essentially what we're looking at when we're finished is the ability to go, you know, to do this evolution from one shape to a surface and vice versa. Um, you'll kind of get the idea of how to use this in different situations and maybe, you know, in your own animations. Um, so I'm just going to start from scratch. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just pick whatever object it is that we want. Um, you know, maybe you want it to just be a basic object with lights attached to it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to use a sphere. I'm just going to make this smaller. And we're going to need uh, to clone this. So I'm going to drop that in there. Um, this doesn't matter yet because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to conform to a location. So I am going to go into this plane. When I go into Cloner, I need to tell it Object. And you'll notice my spheres disappear because I'm, I've not yet told it what object I want my spheres to be stuck to. So I'm going to drag in my plane. And you'll notice right away I've got all these things that look like marshmallows all packed together. And now the way you're controlling the number of uh, spheres at, at present is with your width and height segments um, on your plane. So, you know, I know that if I go to 10 by 10, um, that I've, I'm looking at 100 spheres right here. Um, and we can still go in and resize the sphere. So now I kind of have this egg crate looking thing. So we'll leave it at that for right now. And let's just say in this instance, we just want all of these to fly up. And let's use a star. Okay, so one of the reasons why we were messing with this is because we work with uh, drone swarms. And in, in order to, to start a new drone show, we need to animate and show people exactly what it's going to look like before you start it. So in this case, imagine these are all little light points from drones, and then they're going to fly up and start doing formation flying. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to create another cloner. And then I'm going to take the spheres, because this is my object that's not going to change, and pop it under cloner. And the same thing, this has got to be an object cloner, and the object I want is the star. And the distribution right now is, is not what we want. First things first, we have to change the count. And voila, now we've got the count we want. It's matching. And maybe I'll take my spheres and I will make them a little smaller um, but we we don't have anything animated here yet so I've got I've got I can see what I want this to change to now this this part's really key you want to hover over and click on the first set of uh, clone spheres and then you're gonna go to MoGraph effector inheritance Okay, you have to make sure that that is selected, and that's something that took me a while to figure out. Um, and then, essentially, what we're telling the inheritance tag to do, or the inheritance effector to do, is now that it's it was on my ground cloners, it's going to inherit um, directly this next set of cl cloners, and I'm going to morph the motion object, and you'll notice it disappears, and and that's exactly what we want. So now, if I I'm at 100 percent. The clone's done. The inheritance is done. If I go back down to zero, boom. Now you're seeing my evolution here. But, you know, if you want this to be just a particle swarm, you're going to notice that it's a problem that these are all moving kind of linearly or in a row. See how the rows all pop up and it's not, it's going directly into it. It's doing what you want. But, to make it look a little bit more random, we can play with some different parameters. So 
Starting with the first cloner, one thing you can do is you can mess with the distribution. And if I put it on surface, that's going to allow me to do a random particle formation. So first of all, I got to go back to 100 in my count. And if I go back to my inheritance, now I've got this kind of cool looking swarm that are just sort of individual thinking particles that look like they're just doing their own thing. They're magnetized and you know, you can track individual particles as they fly up and stick to different points. Um, so that's that's basically the gist of it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that we, we can keep going here. So let's say that um, if we're looking down on our timeline, I'm going to change this to like 240 frames. So let's say that for the first few frames, I'm going to add a keyframe at zero. And I'll do another keyframe at 100 when we've done our full effect. OK. Let's say now we want to go from the star to another object. So let's pick another object. Let's say we're going to go from the star to helix. All right. And let's just make sure that our helix is rotated that way. We'll put it down here for now. Same sort of steps, same boring steps. We're going to go cloner. And we need another sphere we're going to drop in there. And then on the cloner object, we're going to drop in the helix. And again, we're going to go 100 particles. All right. Same as before, we're going to go click on the original cloner. Go to the effector, inheritance. And now I'm going to drop in this cloner 2 directly. OK? Don't see anything here. In fact, I lost my initial thing. But there it is. So now I'm going from the star to the helix. All right? So if I keyframe this, go forward. Oh, sorry, a little hang up there. Go forward another 100. Go to 100 there. Boom. I've got my full transition now okay and we can get rid of these cloners we don't need to be looking at the cloner or these um, splines shapes here so now if I play my animation here we're gonna fly into formation and then we're gonna boom we're gonna go right over into a helix so that's kind of the gist of it again and obviously we can add certain things here like on the star cloner you know we could be doing something like maybe it was rotate maybe we want it to be like rotating or something so I need to find the star oh, oh sorry yeah the star here so maybe what I want is before I get to the 100 frames, right about here, I want this thing to be like rotating kind of coolly. So I'll start it there, and then I'll rotate it around to like 120. I'll do a, we'll do a 180 degree turn, and then I keyframe that. So now it's going to do this like little twirl, whoop. And then, boom, I'm going to migrate into my other particle swarm. So you, I just really wanted to show you the examples of, of kind of the power and in, in how to use the cloner and the inheritance effector. And there's other tutorials out there about using matrix. I'll show you another tutorial on how to use the matrix um, tool, which is under MoGraph. Um, it's just another way to do this. But um, that's all I've got time for right now. hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope this is useful. Thanks.